Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. It is a Friday evening. It is the 28th of May, the year of our Lord, 2021. And tonight, our psalm is the 71st psalm. We continue with our study in St. John's Gospel, the 7th chapter. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope. My trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been a potent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in a time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch for my life consult together and say God has forsaken him. Pursue and seize him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. May my accusers be put to shame and consumed with scorn and disgrace. That may they be covered who seek my hurt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Lord Jesus, who in your childhood set an example for the young to follow, by your holy word teach our children, and all the rising generation, the beginning of wisdom, which is the fear of God. Cause our young men and women to shun the byways of vanity and vice, and to walk in the straight path of godliness and virtue, and make them ornaments of your holy church. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And again, our text tonight is St. John's Gospel, the 7th chapter, verses 30 through 31. Now, Jesus had just gotten through speaking in the temple, and the people had made the comment earlier that, well, he can't be the Messiah because the Messiah is going to come from a place where we don't know. You know, we're not going to be able to know where he has come from. And so they had this idea that it's going to be like he zapped down, that, that Star Trek, he materialized. Uh, but the reality is, no. Um, there are scriptures that point to where he was going to be born. And they all had mentioned that he was from Galilee, which is interesting because he originally was born in Bethlehem, which fulfills the prophecies of Isaiah. And so they would have known where he was coming from, but he would also be called a Nazarite, and he was from Nazareth, and therefore he was uh, also called a Nazarene. And so uh, there's some things that just don't mesh. But even though they think they know where he came from, they don't know from whom he has come. And he makes that clear. He's not there on his own, but he's about his father's business. They decide they're going to seize him. And uh, so some had already said, this man is crazy, and now there are some that want to seize him. But we noticed uh, last night that the Pharisees and those uh, relig religious authorities had not yet seized him. And so the people were starting to think, well, wait a minute. You know, maybe they know something we don't know. Maybe they think he's the Christ. And, um, but we're going to see why they didn't seize him in verse 30. At this time, they tried to seize him. But no one laid a hand on him, because his time had not yet come. Still many in the crowd put their faith in him. They said, when the Christ comes, will he do more miracles, miraculous signs, than this man? Notice that they went to seize him, but it wasn't his time yet. That's important, because God has authority over time and what occurs in time. Now, I'm not being fatalistic. I'm not saying that that when something happens, you can blame God. You know, um, 
we're not going to start walking around, you know, saying, well, if God allows, you know, that God, God does have a purpose. He has a time. You know, all things work together for the good for those that love God according to His purpose. But here, it's not yet Jesus' time to go to the cross to be crucified. And so, but there are people that are basically saying, wait a minute, is anybody going to do more miraculous signs than he's already done? Feeding of the 5,000 plus women and children. Healing the sick. Making an invalid walk. All sorts of miraculous things doing constantly fulfilling those passages in Isaiah. And Isaiah, you know, points to the Messiah as being one who would do all this stuff. But they look at the miraculous signs, they still don't understand the most miraculous sign will be when he rises from the dead. And they still don't get the understanding of atonement, evidently, the purpose for which Jesus came. He came to live a life we could not, to die a death we dare not, to give us what we deserve not, eternal life. He came to live the perfect life. He came to pay for our sin. He is the spotless Lamb of God. Our Agnes Day. St. John, or uh, John the Baptizer, was the one that said that pointed and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And pointed to Jesus. He is the one. So he is both high priest and sacrifice. And so they're looking at all the miracles, but the greatest miracle is this. That Jesus undid what Adam did. He went to the cross and died for us to give us eternal life. Life is in His blood. And so, that's the miraculous thing. And if He went to all that trouble and all the pains so that we might be no longer held accountable for our sin, and as St. Paul also says, He came so that He could become our mediator, that if we have a problem, if we're facing some really big struggles, we can go straight to Jesus in prayer and ask for His help. We don't have to rely on ourselves. How often can we not accomplish what we want to? So we go to, we go to the cross. We go to Christ. It was for our sins He died. It was for us that He came. And so we can always turn to Him. As he says in Matthew, And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He is ever present. So if you have a need, ask him. He is there. And he cares. That's all I have for you tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God's blessings. Have a great night in the Lord.